When you are busy doing a recording, make sure that the light is falling onto your face when you are doing the dance. It's best to do a dance recording during the day when you have natural lighting. But if you aren't able to do that, then you can use artificial lights. But just make sure that the lights are not captured in the shot that you're shooting. The only thing that should be in the shot is the dance that is happening. The other thing is don't have any lights or windows behind you. Preferably you want to have a plain background. I'll show it in another snap. When it comes to the cameras themselves, I've got two examples here. One is on a tripod, we're using a phone. And the other one is on a makeshift set of books or a box. We have a tablet over there. Uh, try not to get somebody to hold the camera. Rather put it on a tripod. The person might think they're very stable, but you're going to constantly have moving if you do that. So you must stabilize it either using a set of box or books or on a tripod stand with a cell phone holder to position it. The other thing that is important is the positioning of the camera in relation to where you are. Now you see on the floor here there are markers to the left and right. I've just made them much more obvious than what you would need to do. You could just put a little piece of tape down there just to help you as to how far you've got to move. So the ones on the sides are how far to the left you've got to move. The one in front is how far forward you're going to move. And that's just to guarantee that wherever you move, you are focused on the camera. As we have it here in the snap, you don't see these markers on the side. Those are just to indicate that you don't go that far. So if you are dancing and keeping to these left and right markers, you'll always be seen in the shot itself. So you've got to have somebody set the shot up for you position it nicely um, and just make sure that these markers are not in the shot itself. You don't see these pieces of tape on the floor. So they are just guidelines as to how far you've got to move in the space when you're busy dancing. And you've also got to see a little bit of clearance on your head on top and at the bottom because when you move forward you still want to be able to see your feet. Again from a different angle you can see here that if you move forward up until this line in front you want to make sure that the camera will still be able to pick up your feet there so if you find you move a meter away from this area and your feet is disappearing then you rather move the line backwards so that you know wherever you move you are captured fully in the entire screen of the camera itself the other point that is good to do is to have a central point a homing point which is a little cross or a little mark you can make that whenever you finish with certain moves, you can come back to that point. And being on the spot here, you know that you'll be captured fully on the camera. You'll be positioned in the middle of the camera and you can always move from this point out to other points. The other part that is essential also is to know that when you're doing the dance, make sure that you have a plain background, not have doors or bookcases or things that are going to distract when you're busy with your session. And if it's possible that you have an area that's maybe got a couch here, it mustn't be in the view of the shot that you're shooting. But if you have couches and curtains around on the side, it plays a big role in muffling, you know, any of the echo sounds of your voice when you are talking and instructing. And then again, important is you need to project your voice when you are talking here because the audience needs to hear you. Besides watching you dance, they need to hear you also. And if you have music playing, make sure that the music is not overpowering your voice or that your voice is not overpowering the music so that it's picked up well. One of the other things that you must do is get somebody to position the camera and then you do a mock run out of how you're going to do the dance. They look and see how things are going and for them to monitor it for the first minute or two while you're busy with your recording so that they can see that you are staying within the scope of the recording the camera itself and once you're happy with that then they can leave the camera unattended and you can carry and do the recording totally because if you don't do that you might right from the word get go move out of the scope of the camera and you do your entire training and only discover afterwards that you haven't recorded you've moved off camera so hopefully that helps you to set up a good recording.